Today we're gonna watch some doctors who were caught on camera behaving very badly. Let's get started. Sit up. Dude, sit, up. Can't. sit up. I'm having you sit up. I can't get up. This morning, this emergency room doctor banned from working in this Northern California hospital. Los Gatos. If I could get up off this chair, I really would. But yeah, I can't. you really should because this is ridiculous. I can't, and you're not gonna yeah, keep you're tugging. I don't understand what this doctor is frustrated with. Everyone can have a bad day, but when you're taking it out on someone who's ill, that's like the worst form of it. I just tried to inhale, and I even told her I could not inhale. <laughs> he can't inhale, wow, he must be dead. Are you dead, sir? I don't understand, you are breathing just I mean, this What the doctor is doing is totally unprofessional. It's not necessarily medically wrong, because he's clearly breathing fine in terms of whether or not he's stable, but when you're mocking someone and they're telling you they're having difficulty inhaling, you need to be able to function professionally here. They gave him fluids and they gave him something, a pill, I don't know what they gave him, yeah. For what? For his, mm. for his pain and for the, for the anxiety. So you need narcotics, is that what you need? Here we go. The one thing that is important for patients to know, when you come in and you say, I need pain medication anxiety, not all doctors are gonna be receptive to this. Can you imagine if a patient comes in and says, I need pain medication anxiety medication when they're experiencing something like collapsing during a basketball game, and I say, oh, okay, I, I wanna make sure I do the right thing that you ask, and I give it to them, and they were having a heart attack the whole time that was never ruled out, and they end up dying. That's totally my fault. So there's a, a layer of this isn't a gas station or a 7-Eleven where you you can just go in and order what you'd like. But at the same time, the doctor should be receptive if the patient's explaining what worked well in the past, what does this feel similar to, and then rule things out. In my mind, I don't think she should be practicing medicine at all because if it's not a race thing and she treats everybody that way, then that's a problem. It's very difficult to know whether or not this is a race thing from the limited footage. Obviously, I don't blame the patients for saying that given the circumstances, but you know, doctors can be fined. Doctors can be suspended. They can lose their license for a period of time. They can do work to regain their ability to practice. Just stripping someone of their license every time they do something wrong is not good because then doctors don't feel protected. And sometimes that can come at the cost of them practicing well and also at the cost of their mental health. It shouldn't be something that should be taken away off of a single incident. A repeated incidents that are not improving with uh, reprimands and suspensions, etc. obviously, yes. Listen closely. Time to rally go. We have annoying patients to go. <laughs> Where to land, nobody knows. Okay, that doesn't tell me much. We're burnt out as a health provider group. Sometimes we need to unwind and sometimes we do that through humor and dark humor. It should never be at the expense of a patient making someone feel bad. Her patient used his phone to record post-op instructions, but he says he did not press stop before he went under. Really, after five minutes of talking to you in pre-op, I wanted to punch you in the face and man you up a little bit. The thing is, I mean, he's like, I always pass out when um, I look at the Well, why are you looking, looking then, retard? The patient filing a lawsuit anonymously. He's identified only as DB in court documents claiming medical malpractice, in part because of this false diagnosis. I'm gonna mark hemorrhoids even though we don't see them, we probably won't. Why would you say that? That's not that's not even funny. Like they're saying someone's annoying and then they're saying that you're gonna make up a diagnosis for them. That's so strange. Jessica Stipe was suffering from a severe case of the flu and waited one hour and 15 minutes as her symptoms grew worse. We've done a urine test on you, I've nope, seen I mean, you. You came in and said, I'm gonna check your pee. I'm Does that take three pee. seconds, you think? I don't know how long Do it you takes. wanna be seen or not? I wanna go home and get in my bed. I then fine, get the hell out. In situations like this, patient says, it's so long I wanna leave. I don't recommend you leave. I think we should finish the exam. We'll do our best to do it in a timely manner. But if you'd like to leave, please. You're more than welcome to do it, it's your choice. The more offense you take, the more that the patient can grow even angrier and do something dangerous or problematic, break something, punch something, assault another patient. So like, you're just creating more problems. I will now. file a complaint with a better business. Mom, I got it on video, so it doesn't matter. And then, Go. What's your daughter? This. What's daughter your name? You're recording this? 
<laughs> the doctor grabs the phone right out of the daughter's oh hand. Oh my God. Give me my phone. I was almost like starting to get to the point where I was like, why is the patient recording this? Why are they talking about this on Inside Edition? And then the guy grabs the phone like, okay, come on. Dr. Peter Gallagly says the patient was belligerent and abusive to the office staff. Still, he apologized saying in a statement, I regret losing my temper and speaking to the two women in a manner that is not befitting a medical doctor. Good apology. I have experienced patients being really rude to my staff, but I don't step in to say, I'm gonna yell and now take control of this. That actually is not taking control. Taking control of the situation means asking the staff member to go into the back into safety, putting myself on the front lines to allow the patient to yell at me. While I am a soundboard explaining to the patient that they're free to leave, if not, we can give them care, but you do not intervene unless like someone's actually getting physically abused or something. TikTok plastic surgeon. Yes, that's apparently a thing. Yeah, I, I hate that that's what it's called. YouTube doctor seems like I'm only a doctor on YouTube. I continuously work two to three days a week, every week, not really taking time off at all since I graduated residency seven years ago, which means I've been practicing as a doctor for 10 years now. So this is Dr. Roxy, seen here doing lots and lots of TikTok dances. Nothing wrong with dances on their own. He was accused of injuring her patients while she was live streaming her surgeries to TikTok. That's a big risk of live streaming surgeries. Not only do you have to make sure all your paperwork's uh, in, done correctly, that the patient understands what they're going to experience, meaning that people will see their procedure, their insides, etc. But also that you're not recording yourself making mistakes. There is no more damaging evidence than you recording your own mistake. Now, allegedly she would get permission from her patients before she did this stuff, but the Ohio State Medical Board apparently warned her that it is wrong to <laughs> live stream your surgeries. The Board of Medicine is telling you you can't do something. Don't test it. That's just like you're gonna lose. There's there's no if ands or buts about it. One patient suffered a perforated small bowel and a soft tissue infection after Dr. Roxy was looking into the camera while performing liposuction. So when you're performing liposuction, I've seen various videos and social media content and even doctors in my hospital who perform it, they have to make this motion. And when you're doing this motion, if you're looking away and not looking at the surgical field, you can make a mistake. So I guess she would be doing liposuction while reading and responding to comments on the live stream. I'm worried about responding and reading comments on social media, period. And she's just like, I'm gonna do it while I perform a surgery. Like that's the one time you don't wanna be distracted. For the second time in three years, former Dr. George Blotty found himself in handcuffs. This time charged with five murders, all linked, Nassau's DA says, to the excessive painkiller prescriptions written by the 75 year old. There's uh, many doctors that function in what we call like a pill mill, where they essentially get money to prescribe huge doses of medications, usually controlled substance medications. Then that's very dangerous because it fuels the addiction crisis. It fuels the secondary black market where they sell these drugs on the streets. Obviously a lot of money is made, but also a lot of people are suffering as a result. His alleged victims, three men and two women in their 30s, 40s and 50s. They were prescribed a total of 45,000 pills over a four year period. Right now in New Jersey where I work, I receive a report every month of how many of these controlled substances I'm prescribing. How does it compare to fellow doctors in my specialty in my region? That's pretty interesting. There are some patients that are coming in today and saying they're in pain when just yesterday they got a 30 day prescription of opioids and I already know that's a big red flag. And we actually have pain contracts uh, with patients that we sign or controlled substance contracts where they say that they're not gonna doctor shop, meaning go to multiple doctors to get the same medication. They're gonna be responsible and use one pharmacy to the best of their ability. And when you have that contract in place, you have really good um, communication and very clear communication with your patient. Elizabeth Wettlaufer, a registered nurse who's known to have worked in both public facilities and private homes, was brought in for questioning after a series of deaths of elderly patients in her care. Was this the first person that you did this to? Well, there were other people that did it to who didn't die. Prior to James? What did she do to try and make them die? So, was this your first attempt at, at overdosing these people on insulin? Yes. If you give someone too much insulin, what happens is it radically lowers the blood sugar of a patient, so much so that they can become hypoglycemic and that could be lethal. And I didn't really want her to die. I just, I don't know, I was just, angry and um, had this sense inside me that she might be a person that God wanted back with them. Mm, this is some kind of religious thing, it sounds like. Is that the point 
and I hate to get off the to, topic here, but the point where you had these feelings in your stomach and almost that laughter after it happened, yeah. is that the part that you didn't tell Dr. Khan? Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth was sentenced to eight concurrent life terms in prison with no possibility of parole for 25 years. That sounds like an appropriate charge given the, the severity of the cases. We've actually seen this happen with nurses uh, locally in New Jersey. There was a case where there was a nurse giving heart arrhythmia medication to a fatal dose in patients without them knowing. If you want me to do like a medical investigation series on some of the worst crimes in healthcare, leave a comment down below. Malachi, they say you've been practicing medicine without a license. To when Malik Wait, how do you practice medicine without a license? You have to know why. Oh, this is the guy? This self proclaimed doctor is only 18 years old. The police report says oh. he was walking around the halls in a doctor's coat. Witnesses reporting he'd been roaming the hospital halls for a month. Roaming the hospital and practicing as a doctor is two very different things. If he's not making decisions for patients, he's not giving them medications, he's not performing procedures, he's just impersonating, I guess, to some degree. But police snapped this picture of the lab coat in his car. On one lapel, the title anesthesiologist. On the other, his name. <laughs> The hospital did not press charges, claiming in a statement the individual never had contact yeah. with any hospital patient. But that's so ridiculous. Why is he walking around with, like, what is he, Halloween? It was in early January that Malachi held a grand opening for this medical clinic. What? No way, that's not real. This is the New Birthing Life Medical Center. What? There's something, he opened the, who's funding this? And when you peel back the tape, the sign on the door has his name, and those two crucial letters. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe, how is this, how is he not in jail? Your training comprises of a lot of things. Yeah, but you weren't in med school. So I am not, I am not portraying as, as an MD. This is like why YouTube started their little logo. As you can see below this video, it says that I'm a real doctor with a real medical license. And sometimes that's funny, like when I'm playing a game and it says, hey, this is a real doctor and I'm playing a game or I'm making a video with Bear. We need something like this in real life for this gentleman. Or ask his business partner, Percy as well. business partner! He claims to have invested $10,000 in the clinic. I feel like I shouldn't judge until I know. When the gavel hits and the jury decides that- You need the gavel to hit? My guy, ask him if he's went to school. An 86 year old woman, police say he treated her recently for severe stomach pain and charged her nearly $3,500. What services did you provide in exchange <laughs> 30 for money? Services, you'd have to define that. That's what he's asking you. He's asking you to define the services. Are you a fraud? I don't appreciate your tone. His tone has not changed throughout the whole interview. I don't know where you're seeing this information from, but it is inaccurate. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to cut this in this interview short. But he has said this may not cut his medical career short, saying he hopes to open another clinic in the future. That is, of course, once he's done dealing with his legal woes. Who is investing into this? I was a young kid that got overly ambitious. Wow, overly ambitious. There's kids who are like, 10 years old, I run up to me, they're like, I wanna be a doctor. And I'm like, I think that's very ambitious. He was 18 years old, didn't go to school, and was practicing as a doctor. That's definitely overly ambitious. Incredible medical rescues caught on camera, much better than, than these situations. Click here to check that out, and as always, stay happy and healthy.